I'm gonna be honest, I thought this day would never come, but Xingqiu is so broken that I can't not talk about him. Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're actually gonna talk about Xingqiu because he's honestly one of the best supports in the game. I believe he's up there with Bennett uh, in terms of like best four star supports uh, and, and definitely in my opinion, like the best four star burst support in the game because of the sheer amount of damage he deals. Now, I know he used to be very underrated and now people actually understand that he's good. So he's not really underrated anymore, but just in case you don't know why he's good, I will be covering that in this video. Basically his burst is insane and he enables uh, he can be just a really good off-field support and enabling a lot of carries uh, like Pyro DPSs to Vaporize. Um, like, you know, Diluc, Xingqiu is just insane DPS. So in this video, we're going to be talking about best build, basically best weapons, best artifacts. We're going to talk about how he works, talents, constellations, everything. Uh, everything you need to know about Xingqiu in one video. I don't want to waste your guys' time, so I'm going to get right into it. First of all, I just want you to know that I stream most nights on Twitch. Follow me if you want, link in the description. Uh, that being said, let's get right into it. Let's start by talking about Xing Chu, his talents, and general information. We'll start by talking about uh, Xing Chu's elemental skill. Now, what this does is actually does quite a few things. First of all, it does a good amount of damage. As you can see, it actually does do a lot of damage if you build your Xing Chu properly. Um, but on top of that, it also gives you rain swords, which, are, which basically give you damage reduction, which is very, very nice because it'll just make you take less damage. Uh, it also makes your character wet, which is unfortunate, and you can get frozen and fighting cryo enemies can be annoying. But um, overall, it's not that bad, and it's not nearly as bad as like Barbara's E, for example. The main downside with this ability is it's very, very long uh, skill cooldown. However, do note that with Sacrificial Sword, it, it can make this much better, much more efficient because you can basically use it twice, uh, especially if your Sac Sword is refined, and then uh, you'll just get a ton of particles. It's four or five, so average 4.5. Uh, energy particles per hit and obviously if you have sack sword which i'm going to mention like 20 times throughout this video uh it, you do get twice as many so as you guys can see uh my ultimate is on cooldown i don't really have many much energy i press e here you see all these particles flying to me and then i use it again if i have sack sword and look at that i already have my burst the main reason why you should be running ching chu though and why i think he's in honestly like borderline overpowered support why he's so so good is because of his elemental burst now what rain cutter does is basically um it, it puts a bunch of swords around you that do a ton of hydro damage and it can enable your dps especially if you're running diluc to spam vaporize on like almost every hit and it's really really uh fast application and it does a ton of damage as you guys can see it's 76 percent on every single sword and it lasts for 15 seconds with only a 20 second cooldown so its uptime is very long and while its energy cost is high your e does generate a bunch of particles and with a sacrificial sword uh, obviously it's a lot easier to get on top of that you have two passives one of them is actually regarding your rain swords which are generated by your abilities uh, and what it does is it basically heals the current character so your rain swords can actually heal. Now, while it isn't enough to make Xing Chu like a main healer or anything, it is a nice amount of HP that can definitely help out. Lastly, you get a 20% hydro damage bonus once you ascend Xing Chu past level 60. So getting him 60 out of 70 ASAP should be your priority because it's just a pretty big damage bonus, uh, damage increase. So you definitely should. Uh, and also in terms of talent priority, definitely level your rain cutter, your burst um, as your number one priority. Very quickly, I wanna give you guys a pretty important tip in terms of like, uh, optimizing your your skill order with Xing Chu. Now, basically, what you should do is you should press E before your Q, even if your Q has all like is ready and uh, you can use it whenever. Now, you might think it's a waste of energy particles because you're already full on energy, but actually, if you E and then Q instantly, what'll happen is like it'll, it'll travel to you while you press it while you're in the animation. So as you can see here, if you look bottom right, I already have like one fourth or one third of my Q ready just because I use my E before my Q. And then if I press E again because of Sacrificial Sword, it's already almost ready. Uh, and then I'll just get it up passively while I'm on my delete. I feel like we need to talk about Xing Chu's constellations because they're amazing. Now, before we get into it, I want you guys to know that Xing Chu at C0 is insane. He's still arguably the best like four star. He's so good even at C0, okay? However, his constellations are very, very good, notably two and six, but also a lot of others like three and four are very good. Uh, so we're gonna talk about them very quickly because the new event where you get to pick a four star is coming out soon with 1.3. So you might wanna get a constellation on your Xing Chu or unlock them, um, or you know, get them from C5 to six or one to two or something. So I do wanna cover them all to basically talk about which ones are really good. First of all, C1 uh, gives you an extra rain sword, which is arguably the worst constellation, like it's fine but it's not as good as the others. Uh, notably, C2 is amazing. Uh, it's, in my opinion, his second best constellation. It is very, very good. It not only decreases the hydro resistance of opponents that get hit by the sword, so that increases your Xing Chu damage, but will also increase the damage of other hydro characters like Child. 
But on top of that, it increases the duration of rain cutter by three seconds. And that's honestly so huge. Having an extra three second uptime on your ultimate is so, so nice because it already has a very long duration. So adding three seconds to that makes it up for like forever, honestly. And it's just so, so good. His C3 is amazing just because of how good rain cutter is. It gives you more damage. Uh, and likewise, the C5 is fine, but it's not as good as C3 because it only buffs your E, but it's still not bad. C4 basically gives you 50% damage bonus on your E once your Q is procced, which is very nice. Um, it basically just gives you more damage. C6, however, is really good. This is definitely Shing Chu's best um, constellation. However, according to my math guy, Alexi, check him out, link in the description. Um, there is actually a mistranslation on the constellation. I'll put it up on screen. But yeah, basically it just makes you do a ton more damage and generates energy. So it's just so good overall. It's really, really nice for Shing Chu. Now let's talk about Shing Chu's weapons. So there are a few weapons that are good on him, um, but the main thing you wanna realize is that he is a, as a burst support character, he really, really wants energy recharge. So the first thing you should be looking for, in my opinion, is an energy recharge sword. Now, while there are, as I said, a few viable ones, the sacrificial sword is amazing on him. And if you have it, I really recommend you use it, especially if it's refined. But uh, even at refinement one, sack sword is so good on Shing Chu that I really think you should use it. Basically what it does is it resets your elemental skill cooldown while it has a chance to at least, and that chance goes up with the refinement. And while the sword is good on many supports, it's especially good on Ching Chu because obviously the energy recharge, but also his E, his elemental skills cooldown is so long that having the reset available, or be, you know, the chance of it resetting is, a, is really a big deal. On top of that, it gives you four to five en uh, energy particles, as I mentioned earlier. So getting double the particles is just insane uh, because of how much your burst costs. Now, I don't really know where to put this part, uh, this section in the video. Usually I put weapons near the end, but I feel like I talked about sacrificial swords so much throughout this video that uh, I might put it earlier. But what I want you guys to know is that there are a lot of good options. You don't need sacrificial sword. Even if you're like free to play, uh, there are good options. For example, a free to play option that recently went away uh, is Festering Desire. Now this was in, this was free to play because of the event, right, with Albedo. So if you did get this, it could be a very good option because of the energy recharge substat. Skyward Blade is also very good. And I've seen some people argue that it could be better than Sack Sword, but I think overall Sack Sword is just better, uh, especially because of the mistranslation on C6, which uh, I show in the constellation section. Favonia Sword is also a really good option. It can be very good because uh, you do have a lot of crit on Ching Chu, so your effect will be proccing, and it has 13% ER at level one, which is a very high base uh, ER. So many good options for Shing Chu, but I do talk about Sacrificial Sword a lot because of how like broken it is on him. All right, now we're gonna talk about artifact sets. So there's actually two really good ones. The first one is Noblesse Oblige, uh, the two piece and the four piece. So first of all, the two piece Noblesse Oblige is great because as we know, Shing Chu's burst does a ton, a ton of damage. And this goes up with constellations, but even at C0, his burst does a lot of damage. So because of that, you at least want the two piece Noblesse and the four piece is a very good option, especially on a low investment Shing Chu, because uh, if you're not doing that much damage, having that 20% attack bonus on all your party members actually is very nice. Now what's optimal in the late game though is definitely a two piece Noblesse with a two piece Hydro set, Heart of Depth. Because of the bonus damage you're gaining, you're getting a 15% Hydro damage bonus and a 20% Elemental Burst damage bonus. And as we know, your burst does a lot of damage, 76% per sword. And uh, obviously there's just a ton of swords. So because of that, Two Piece Noblesse and Two Piece Heart of Death is what I recommend. Now in the early game, um, until your high investment, you can do like four Noblesse or in the very early game, like pre uh, domains, you can do something like Instructor or Two Piece Energy Recharge sets like Scholar or Exile can also work. In terms of the stats you want on your artifacts now, uh, we'll go a bit more in detail. So first of all, for your substats, so things like Feather and Flower where you're only looking for substats, there are a few that you want, but I would say mainly Energy Recharge and then Crit. So in general, energy recharge is usually the main one you want until you have enough. And uh, apart from that, crit damage and crit rate are both very, very nice for Shing Chu. Obviously getting attack percent can be good too, um, but yeah. So now we're gonna talk about the main stats. Uh, we'll talk about Sans last. So for the goblet, first of all, you definitely want hydro damage bonus. It's a no brainer uh, just for more damage. And then for your circlet, you definitely want crit either rate or damage. Now I've seen people run attack on the circlet, but frankly, it's just not as good as crit uh, in the late game. So once you are farming for good stats, definitely go for crit on the circlet. You can go for either damage or rate depending on your ratios. Now for your sands, I see a lot of confusion on this. People always ask me, do you run attack or energy recharge on your sands? And honestly, it depends, but here is my situation and my take on it and what I think is optimal. 
So if you don't have energy recharge on substats, or for example, you don't have a sacrificial sword giving you a lot of ER, and keep in mind my sword is only level 70, so this will go up uh, on top of the, the really good effect. If you don't have sac sword and like good uh, ER substats or even any, you can run an energy recharge sense. Now, what I would recommend you do is basically test out how much you need, try ER, try attack, but for an optimal build with Sacrificial Sword, attack does tend to be the best because you already have enough energy recharge, so you might as well deal more damage. That being said, for a lot of people, I can see why energy recharge can be good, especially as I said, if you don't have Sacrificial Sword or if you notice that your energy recharge isn't high enough. For me, I currently have 205% energy recharge because uh, with an attack percent hourglass because of my good substats and my Sac Sword, which again is only level 70. And this for me is, is more than enough. Now we gotta talk about Xing Chu's party comps. Xing Chu is an amazing burst support, as you guys know, and because he does so much damage and it's an off field support, meaning you don't have to spend that much time on him, his swords are active even when he's not on the field, uh, it makes him a very good support for honestly many, many comps, and he can pretty much fill into your team even if you don't need the hydro reactants. That being said, there are some specific comps that make him shine, especially, and that's what we're gonna be talking about. First of all, he's an amazing support for pyro characters like Deluc, Klee, or he can even be paired with a Shang Ling. And for me, a Deluc main, it's pretty apparent that Xing Chu is so broken with Deluc. Like, they're definitely one of the highest DPS duos in the game. It's just so good together because of how fast Xing Chu applies Hydro. You can constantly vaporize with like every hit on Deluc, making it insane. I will make a video in the future comparing Xing Chu to like Kea, Chong Yun uh, as supports for Deluc, but just know that Xing Chu overall is higher damage for your Deluc because of how fast you can apply Vaporize versus the slow rate of Cryo application on Cryo supports for Deluc. On top of that, because of his insane damage, he can be used, as I said, in most comps, and he shines especially in comps with selfish DPSs. What I mean by that is someone like Razor, um, who will be attacking a lot, and during his ult, he'll be on the field for a long time, right? You don't want to swap out, or his elemental burst, his ultimate, wears off. So he is, by nature, very selfish. So because of that, off-field supports like Fischl, like Xing Chu, are especially good with him because their bursts uh, are, are there on him the whole time during his ultimate. And he'll just deal a ton of damage on top of your Razor's damage. Xing Chu is also amazing in freeze comps, like the one showed on screen. Uh, basically, he's just so good because he constantly applies that Hydro, letting you perma-freeze enemies, and letting your freeze comp work. So I made a video on an amazing 4-star freeze comp with Kea as main DPS, and it works exceptionally well. Uh, because you can just perma freeze enemies with Xing Chu's, uh, with Xing Chu constantly applying Hydro and uh, using like Chang Yun or Kea to freeze enemies. As you guys can see, even without Xing Chu's uh, ultimate being active, right, uh, these enemies are still getting perma frozen just because of the, the, the rain swords around Bennett and the Chang Yun field, allowing him to constantly melt and just destroy everything. So yeah, overall guys, Xing Chu is flexible in his team comps, he's flexible with just about everything, he's just an insane burst support, and one of, if not the best, 4 stars in the game. At least the best 4 star, like, burst support for burst damage, um, so yeah, he's just really, really good. And guys, you know me, I've always played, like, a Melt the Luke with, like, K and stuff, and while well, that's the playstyle that I enjoy more, because hitting big numbers makes me happy, and I personally enjoy Kea, uh, Xing Chu is just objectively like the best support for Deluc, so I want you guys to use him if you do like him because he's really good. And I've been starting to use him a lot recently in like all my Abyss runs and stuff because he's just really good. Uh, and so I wanted to give you guys the best possible build for this character so you guys know how to use him efficiently. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Shao is coming soon and I'm so excited. I'm gonna show you guys like how to build them. I'm gonna do optimization, comps, all that stuff. And Zhongli buffs are coming, so a lot of stuff to do. I hope you guys are ready. I'm streaming tonight and most nights on Twitch. Obviously, you guys already know this. Come come by if you want to because I appreciate having friends. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this video was informative. Uh, have a great time destroying everything with this amazing burst support. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay too. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.